Number one, at its peak, a tornado is 60 meters in diameter and carries 500 kilometer per hour winds. What is its angular velocity in revolutions per second? All right, uh, so I have a little picture drawn over here. We're taking the top view of the tornado, meaning pretend that you're in the clouds looking down the tornado. Here's the middle of it. And the diameter of the tornado is 60 meters, and therefore obviously the radius, the radius 30. Um, we also, it also told us that the winds that are being produced are 500 kilometers per hour. Now, knowing that this is a linear distance over time, I know that the given information has to be some linear velocity. And therefore, relating it to circular motion, it would be the tangential velocity. Okay, I already noticed that these units, right, I need them in meters per second. So um, let's actually just do that conversion right now. So 500 kilometers per hour. We're going to convert that into meters per second. So for every one kilometer, there's a thousand meters. Cancel the kilometers. And then one hour, there are 60 minutes. All right, and then where's the I? There it is. And then in one minute, there's 60 seconds. So you can just simply do this. Uh, 500 times 1,000 divided by 3,600 essentially. And we get a, about 130, I'm gonna round, 139. Um, we get 139 meters per second. Okay, so that's pretty crazy. Um, now, what we're being tasked to uh, find out is the angular uh, velocity. So what we have to do is we've got to think about formulas that relate uh, angular velocity, which is omega, to the, somehow the, they gave us the diameter, but we know probably what's important is the radius. And also we have to relate it to the tangential uh, velocity. So I didn't put the formula over here on the right-hand side because this formula is found in another chapter, although you do have to know these formulas for this. Um, but hopefully by now you've been doing enough practice where you kind of have them memorized, all right? So the tangential velocity is equal to the radius multiplied then by the angular velocity, all right? That's from your, like I said, circular motion chapter. So now all we have to do is basically plug in the values, okay? The uh, Actually, why don't we just solve this algebraically first for the uh, angular uh, velocity? So the angular velocity, my handwriting is terrible. Angular velocity is going to be equal to the tangential velocity over the radius. Plugging in now the values, we have a value of approximately 139, all divided by the radius, which was 30 meters. And just now throwing that into the calculator, I'm going to use the exact value on the top, 138.888 from the calculator, but uh, just so you know. So it comes out to be an angular velocity of about 4.63, right? 4.63, and this is now radians per second, all right? Um, so that sounds good. Again, sig figs, I'm not really caring about that right now. I mean, the 500, this book says, can have one or three sig figs. I'm used to knowing if there's no decimal, then there's only one. If there is a, if there is a decimal there, then there are three. So I don't know, whatever. Uh, any In any case, uh, so now what we need to do is just basically convert this value into revolutions per second. So remember the conversion, 2 pi radians is equal to one revolution. And therefore I can take my 4.63 radians per second, multiply it then by, for every two pi radian, there is one revolution. And the units of the radians will cancel, leaving us with revolutions, blah, blah, blah. So take that and divide it by then two times pi. And here we go. So we get a value of 0 0.737, 737 uh, revolutions per second. And that would be the final answer. Guys, thanks for tuning in. All right, please remember to subscribe. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.